the 10 minute rule motion. Tasmina Ahmed Sheikh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that leave be given for me to bring in a bill to amend the system of benefit sanctions, establish automatic hardship payments where sanctions have been imposed, and for connected purposes. Mr. Speaker, there are people in my constituency who have no food to eat today. Until recently, they've been claiming employment and support allowance or job seekers allowance. Their social security state of payments have been stopped. They have been sanctioned, Mr. Speaker. As things currently stand, they have no immediate right of appeal. Some of these people may have made a mistake in their paperwork or have been late for an appointment. They may lack the necessary IT skills to use universal job match or have been asked to do something by job centre staff which they didn't do. Whatever their actions, the current consequences carry too heavy a burden. These people are now left with absolutely no means to sustain themselves. On every level, this is an unacceptable state of affairs. This is a central issue that my proposed bill addresses. It will ensure that all those who are sanctioned will automatically and immediately receive a hardship payment and that these payments will not require to be repaid. Mr Speaker, the current system has punished military veterans for selling poppies. It has removed the sole source of income from those who failed to complete their medical examination because they were having a heart attack at the time. And it has withheld money from people who failed to complete their job search evidence form <coughs> on Christmas Day. Indeed, one of my constituents was recently sanctioned on the strength of hearsay evidence that she had been incarcerated, despite this being wholly untrue. It cannot be right that sanctions are applied on this basis. The system which administers these punishments is deeply and fundamentally flawed. Many of those affected aren't even aware of their rights. Mm. I've met constituents who are not told about hardship payments by staff at the local job centre or even how to appeal. That's why this proposal gives those facing sanctions an automatic right to these payments. This will ensure uniformity in their application. In my view, Mr Speaker, anyone who lacks the means to buy food or heat their homes is a vulnerable person. Mm. There is currently a formal appeals process. When invoked, Mr Speaker, 50% of these appeals against sanctions are upheld. Half of them. This is a system which is at best 50% correct. If there was another process in this land which resulted in half of the judgments being overturned, there would be a national outcry. Yeah, 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 yeah. The human impact of sanctions is such that DWP staff have been required to receive guidance on how to deal with victims <coughs> suffering from mental health issues who are pushed towards self-harm or suicide. It is right that staff have measures in place to help them support vulnerable people who have been driven to their limit, but it's tragic that this has to be seen as a central part of our welfare system. The Department of Work and Pensions has not been able to use their experience to provide any credible evidence whatsoever that this system of financial penalties works to get people back into stable employment. And I am particularly disappointed that the government have failed to act adequately in this matter in their response last week to the Select Committee report. Mm. This chamber has heard time and time again that this is an ideological crusade against the poor, mm. not an evidence-based mechanism to help people find work. Mm. Mr Speaker, it's driving people in this country to food banks. Exactly. Organisations like the Trussell Trust and local food banks like the Gate in Alloa exist because they identified a need that requires to be met. They should not be a necessary extension to the UK's failing benefit system, yeah. but they are. Mm. The social security system as it exists today is not doing what it says on the tin, and the vulnerable cannot wait any longer for this government to get it right. Research carried out by the Child Poverty Action Group has found that 20 to 30 per cent of food bank users said that their household's benefits had recently been stopped or reduced because of a sanction. The same research showed that deciding to accept help from a food bank was often difficult and described by participants as being unnatural, embarrassing and shameful. Mr Speaker, 
What does it say about us if fellow citizens have to rely on charity to sustain themselves? The protection of the vulnerable should be a central tenet of any government's work. It is not a peripheral responsibility and should certainly not be devolved to the kindness of others. Other research from Oxfam presented as evidence to the Working Pension Select Committee earlier this year showed that when women are sanctioned it tends to, be, tends to disproportionately affect them because caring responsibilities often fall to them. Further, charities such as the Single Parent Action Network and Gingerbread have seen a reduction in the number of DWP advisors who are aware that they are able to use flexibility when dealing with lone parents who would otherwise face financial sanctions. This leads to a significant number of loan parents being sanctioned erroneously, only to have the decision overturned. According to Gingerbread, that's 42% for loan parents, compared with 31% of all claimants. The current regime impacts greatly on women, Mr Speaker, and that's why I'm particularly proud that this bill has a cross-party support of nine female MPs. Yeah. As the House will be aware, six months ago, the Working Pensions Committee called for a broad and independent review of benefit conditionality and sanctions because of their concerns over the effectiveness and operation of the current process. After considering this balanced cross-party report for half a year, last week the government rejected its central proposal. Mr Speaker, instead of a fundamental review of the whole system, this government proposes what they call a yellow card system. A yellow card? Mr Speaker, a yellow card is something you get during a football or rugby match. This is no game. And in my view, such terminology is unhelpful and wholly inappropriate. Yeah. A complete rethink of the process is required. The tired old argument that this helps people to find work has not been proven. While the evidence of the despair and poverty inflicted on its victim is growing, victims is growing larger by the day. It must be reformed here, Mr Speaker. Because the limited powers over welfare that have been offered by this Conservative Government to the Scottish <coughs> Parliament specifically preclude measures to mitigate against the system I have described yeah. today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Scottish Parliament should be given the powers required to build a humane system of social security, yeah. not yeah. these real powers which can only mitigate the negative impact of these Tory policies. Yeah. Yeah. From the sanctions regime to the tax credit fiasco, this government continues to punish the poor. This relentless assault must come to an end. Yeah. Mr Speaker, the bill I bring to the House today will not address all the serious problems of this punitive system. I wish it could. I continue to support a full moratorium on all benefit sanctions until an independent and fundamental review of the whole process can take place. But under this particular parliamentary process, I believe I propose to the House a simple and pragmatic measure which would address the fundamental mm. issue of people being knowingly left in destitution. Yeah. This bill will ensure that those who are sanctioned will automatically and immediately receive a hardship payment and that these payments will not need to be repaid. No one should be left without by our social security system. <coughs> yeah, yeah. This government should not abandon those people who need its help the most. Mm. Ministers must reconsider their position on this fundamental issue. Mm. It is the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My proposal would be a positive first step in protecting the vulnerable in my constituency and beyond. Yeah. Mr Speaker, the sanction system is why an increasing number of people and their families in every part of our country do not have the means to eat today. It is one of the key reasons why food bank use in Scotland and across the whole of the UK is at an all-time high. The system it supports is flawed and needs urgent reform. It's why I believe this bill is necessary and so I urge this House to support me today. Yeah. The question is that the Honourable Member have leave to bring in the bill. Mr Philip Davis. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. I rise to oppose this uh, bill. Um, of course, I, I congratulate the Honourable Lady on, on bringing forward her bill. I, I believe she used to be a member of the Conservative Party, Mr Speaker. She's, uh, she's certainly regressed since those uh, heady days. It seems a long time ago since she was espousing any Conservative principles, certainly what she had to say today. I wouldn't want people to run away with the idea, uh, Mr Speaker, from listening to this debate, that uh, people across the country and across this House are opposed to benefit sanctions in the way that the Honourable Lady set out. In fact, many of us are very supportive of the sanctions regime. And I think it's, we should point out to start with 
that sanctions have always played a part of the benefit system in this country. Not, this hasn't been something introduced by this government. They've always been a part of the benefits regime and they've always been an essential part of the benefits regime to make sure that people uh, uh, do what they are requested to do in return for those benefits. And I have to say that many of my constituents contact me to say that they think that the requirements on people who are claiming benefits that, that taxpayers are paying in tax to pay for, that the requirements on them should be actually even more onerous, not less onerous as the Honourable Lady seems to want to suggest. So I refute her starting point which is that sanctions are a bad thing. In my opinion sanctions are a good thing and the, and the least that the taxpayer should expect when people do not abide by the requirements that are understandably made of them in return for claiming benefits. With regard to the hardship fund, uh, Mr Speaker, which the Honourable Lady's Bill directly refers to, it seemed to me that she was uh, peddling some information which may not actually turn out to be quite as it seems. Uh, the first point that should be made is that job seekers who are sanctioned can apply for a hardship payment which is equivalent to 60% of their normal benefit payment. JSA job seekers who are seriously ill or pregnant can receive 80% of their normal benefit payment. Seems to me if the Honourable Lady wants it to go any higher than that, there'd be no point in having any sanctions in the first place. If people are just going to, if people are just going to have their sanction replaced in full by a hardship payment, there'd be no point in having the sanction in the first place. Uh, and so I refute her points that she makes to start with. She should also perhaps have, have uh, pointed out in her remarks, uh, which also makes her bill rather redundant, that those with children, all ESA recipients and anyone categorised as vulnerable can claim hardship payments from day one of their sanction, something that the Honourable Lady omitted from her speech and she was actually trying to give the impression that that wasn't the case. That is the case, uh, whereas other job seekers cannot claim for the first 14 days of a sanction, so the most vulnerable people are already protected. Uh, claimants are regularly told about the availability of hardship payments, contrary to the point that she made, throughout their claimant journey, and improvements have been made to the payment process to ensure that payments are made within three days, and the vast majority who apply do actually receive hardship payments. She mentioned about the uh, review of sanctions, the independent review of sanctions and the Select Committee report. I think she ought to bear in mind that Matthew Oakley, who did the, the independent review of JSA sanctions, actually said, and I quote, a key element of the mutual obligation that underpins the effectiveness and fairness of the security, sec social security system are sanctions, uh, which was, she didn't manage to point that bit out uh, in her remarks. And the uh, chairman of the Select Committee has also said, when she brought about the Select Committee uh, report, he said that he was pleased that the government has accepted many of the committee's criticisms of its approach and their recommendations for change. So given that the hardship payments are already available to the most vulnerable people from day one, uh, of a sanction. Given that uh, most, I think most people in the country support the principle that there should be some sanctions when people don't fulfil their obligations. And I have to say, Mr Speaker, there's a book uh, as thick as you like on, on the reasons why people may avoid being sanctioned. Is the idea that people can just miss an appointment once or five minutes and they're automatically sanctioned is for the birds. It may well be that that's the tale they come and tell the Honourable Lady at her surgery, perhaps because they want her sympathy when they come and tell the tale. I suspect that the truth of why they've been sanctioned is often very different to the, the tale that they would like to tell her. And I'm, a, I'm, I'm sorry that she just seems to accept what they say, hook, line and sinker, without any criticism whatsoever. I know the SNP don't like hearing any criticism. They're not used to it in Scotland, but they better get used to hearing it yeah, in this yeah, uh, particular yeah. house. So I have to say, in, 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 uh, in summary, uh, Mr Speaker, in some way, the SNP will do well to listen to other people's opinions from time to time. They do. They may. They may learn something. They may learn something. Order! Order! <laughs> Mr. Angus Brendan McNeil, yeah. you have yet to reach the apogee of statesmanship, which is my long-term ambition for you. Uh, Calm, yeah. like the colleagues to your left and right, is the right course. Oh. 
Mr. Philip Davis. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Trying to get the honourable gentleman to become a statesman may even be beyond you, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, and beyond your beyond your skills. But given given the, given that um, given that the most vulnerable already ha have access to hardship payments from day one, given that the sanctions regime in itself is a good thing, given that what the honourable lady is proposing goes way beyond the recommendations of the Oakley Review and even way beyond the recommendations of the Select Committee. Uh, given that people are already informed of the hardship payments throughout their claimant journey, uh, her bill is not only bad, it's completely unnecessary even if anyone were to adopt the Honourable Lady's strategy. And for that particular reason, uh, Mr Speaker, I don't, I don't intend to deprive her of a day in the limelight and, and, and have a division on this particular point. But I did think it was worthwhile pointing out that many people in this House, and more importantly many people in the country, do not accept her criticisms of the sanctions regime for benefits. Order. The question is that the Honourable Member have leave to bring in the bill. As many as I have that opinion say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? Hannah Bardell, Sharon Hodgson, Caroline Lucas, Margaret Ritchie, Liz Savile Roberts, Nash Shah, Ailey Whiteford, Corey Wilson, and myself, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Tasmina Ahmed Sheikh. <laughs> Benefit sanctions regime entitlement to automatic hardship payments bill. Second reading what day? 4th of December 2015, Mr Speaker. 4th of December 2015. Thank you. <laughs> Order. We come.